Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're going to have a fun show today. We're going to talk about bovine viral diarrhea or BVD. We're going to talk about from cow calf to feeder, some of the things that are going on with vaccinations and much more. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned. Bovalis Nasal Gen 3 offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, PI3, and BRSV. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose Bovalis Nasal Gen 3 PMH, the first and only intranasal that protects against viral and bacterial pneumonia. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson and we appreciate you joining us. I'm a veterinarian and I'm an owner operator of production animal consultation with my other eight veterinary partners and our other 12 veterinarians that we cover feedlots across the United States. And we have another 45 veterinarians that are members of the PAC network that we have expanded into the cow calf area where we cover up to a million head or over a million head of cow calf pairs in this country. And so understanding what's going on in the industry understanding from the ranch to the feedlot to the packer and to the retailer is is very very important i also have a split appointment teaching at iowa state university i'd be remiss if i didn't thank them for for that uh, appointment so uh wearing a hat today animal medical center great bend kansas giving a shout out to dr nels dr ty dr ashley dr katie and dr caitlin who is daughter number two of the thompson clan she's a mixed animal practitioner out in central kansas amc is just a tremendous uh, opportunity for anybody in veterinary medicine and i know the beef producers in that area are super thankful that they're there we're going to talk about bovine viral diarrhea and bovine viral diarrhea is a virus that has been around forever. It's a pesty virus. And the reason why this is an important topic is that this is a cow-calf origin virus opportunity that presents itself all the way along through the beef supply chain up until harvest, okay? This is BVD, bovine viral diarrhea, is not a, a foodborne pathogen. Humans can't catch BVD. Like many viruses, many bacteria are species specific, right? So, so when we talk about that, uh, the threat or whatever we're gonna discuss about BVD stops it at slaughter. But we have diseases within the cow herd that cause abortions that may cause immunosuppression and cause respiratory disease if they're carried forward into the feedlot. BVD virus, uh, the way it occurs, we have, we have two different types of infections, okay? We have a persistent infection and we have a transient infection. And the persistent infection is one that the calf has in its body its entire life and it never clears it because it thinks BVD is part of itself. And so it spreads BVD in the herds, it spreads BVD in the feed yards, and it spreads BVD wherever it goes through mucous membranes, feces, urine, and things of that nature. Transiently infected calves means that that animal is infected just like you or myself getting a cold, and so we get a virus, we get a cold, our body forms an immune response, it neutralizes the virus, the virus goes away, we get better, 
Okay, we, our body, recognized that BVD or coronavirus or whatever was not us. And so we then form an immune response against it and we clear it. The difference between persistent infection and transient infection is important. We can't cure persistent infection once it happens. We can protect animals from becoming transiently infected through biosecurity and vaccination protocols. So what we're gonna do when we come back, we'll talk about how that persistent infection occurs. And then later on in the show, we're gonna talk about vaccines and, and prevention um, with bovine viral diarrhea. I appreciate you watching Doc Talk. We'll be right back. Stressors that trigger bovine respiratory disease are all around. So when you spot BRD in your herd, turn to Suprevo, the fast that lasts. Suprevo is rapidly absorbed in as little as 45 minutes and lasts up to 28 days. Because in the race against BRD, you need to win. Ready, set, Suprevo. In case of human injection, seek immediate medical advice for use in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle only. For prescribing information, talk to your veterinarian or visit Suprevo.com. When a new calf hits the ground, the clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives them their best chance, but if they don't get any, time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. It's simple, you fill it with warm water, shake it to mix, feed it with a tube or a nipple, and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Ask for it by name wherever animal health supplies are sold. Success in the cattle business hinges on a lot of different people playing their part. From the vet to the cowboy and the nutritionist to the feed truck driver. You rely on them to get their job done right and so do your cattle. Your expectations for the vaccines you use should be no different. By Meat is Cattle vaccines were developed and are made and sold by men and women in the cattle business. No smoke and mirrors, just real world protection that you can rely on. Go to buymeatabiologicals.com to learn more. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here. I'm a veterinarian with Production Animal Consultation, the PAC group, and we cover feedlots and cow-calf operations through our veterinarians and our network. Uh, all across this country. And I'm also a faculty member at Iowa State University uh, where I teach beef production medicine and I teach beef production in general. So persistently infected calves versus transiently infected. So we always heard the BVD PI. Well, that means persistent infection. And what happens is the fetus becomes uh, infected in utero. So while it's in the cow. So the fetal immune system of a, of, a, of a calf turns on at about four months gestation. So between day one of conception and four months gestation, it is just building cells, dividing cells, building organs, things to that nature. And anything that it's building is not being kept track of. All of a sudden, about four to five months gestation, the fetus turns its immune system on. When that immune system goes on, that fetus takes inventory. And the base inventory, it goes through and says, hair, that's me, hoof, that's me, heart cell, that's me, eye, that's me. And if BVD is there circulating in the blood, it says, BVD, that's me. So from that point forward, once it's taken that baseline inventory, anything that it's exposed to, whether it's in the, in the womb or after it's born, it's constantly, the immune system is constantly saying, is this me or is this foreign? Is this me or is this foreign? If it's me, I ignore it, that's great. If it's foreign and it shouldn't be here, alarms go off, immune systems go off, and we're gonna neutralize it, kill it, and clear it from the body. So, a persistently infected calf gets infected before the immune system turns on and then recognizes BBD as itself just like it does any other cell. So then that calf is born with BVD in every cell of its body. That's the reason why, and it never clears it. 
And that's the reason why these persistently infected calves are kind of like the Trojan horse. They come into the herd, they go out of the herd, they come into the feedlot, they go into the feedlot pen, and, and they spread BVD the rest of their life. Now, 1% of the cattle born in the United States are persistently infected with bovine viral diarrhea. Half of those animals will die prior to slaughter. So, a roughly half of a percent of calves born in the United States leave the ranch of origin persistently infected with BVD. As we buy feeder calves, as we bring feeder calves into the feed yard, we then can estimate that somewhere between 0.3 to 0.5 percent of the cattle that arrive are going to be persistently infected. Another good statistic to understand is that one-fourth of the pins, if we have 150, 200 head pins, one-fourth of the pins in a feedlot will contain a BVD PI or persistently infected calf. What does that do? Well, sometimes, and BVD is erratic in its response. Sometimes it's self-protecting and sometimes it causes severe immunosuppression in the herd. And if it causes severe immunosuppression, like we've seen with some of these type two BVD uh, immunosuppressions where we have hardly any white blood cells, those calves have no ability to fight off any other infections such as bovine respiratory disease if they're exposed and if they become infected while at the feedlot. So what we're gonna talk about a little bit more is how it spreads in the feed yard and then some things we can do to stop it. You're watching Doc Talk, and I'm glad you joined us. Stressors that trigger bovine respiratory disease are all around. So when you spot BRD in your herd, turn to Suprevo, the fast that lasts. Suprevo is rapidly absorbed in as little as 45 minutes and lasts up to 28 days. Because in the race against BRD, you need to win. Ready, set, Suprevo. In case of human injection, seek immediate medical advice for use in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle only. For prescribing information, talk to your veterinarian or visit Suprevo.com. When a new calf hits the ground, the clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives them their best chance, but if they don't get any, time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. It's simple, you fill it with warm water, shake it to mix, feed it with a tube or a nipple, and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Ask for it by name wherever animal health supplies are sold. When it comes to treating BRD, you want a product that you can count on to get the job done at an affordable price. Macrosyn by Bimeda delivers on both. A straight shooting, no BS to lathromycin that does what it's supposed to do. End of story. You don't need to take our word for it though. Go to macrosyn.com for customer testimonials and head-to-head -head trial results. For your cattle and your bottom line, choose Macrosyn. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and we're talking about bovine viral diarrhea. So when we start to talk about BVD in the feed yard, it's important to understand a couple of other terms with it. There's type 1 and type 2 BVD and they're different strains, okay? And, and it used to be all the vaccines we had had a type one BVD strain in them. Remember, we used to have modified live four ways. Well, now we have modified live five ways, and meaning that we have the IBR, the BRSV, and the PI3 in that vaccine, but now they all contain type one and type two BVD. Now, there are different species of BVD or strains from 1A and 1B and 2. And someday we'll probably have a, a BVD type 3, but, but vaccinating for both strains is, is important. And so um, what happens when we have a BVD PI? So BVD PIs spread bovine viral diarrhea, whether it's in your cow herd, whether it's in your stalker calves, or whether it's in, in the feedlot, it spreads it through shared water tanks, 
feed bunks. Um, I think about running cattle through processing barns. Uh, you know, if you have a, a, you use your processing barn to doctor and to uh, process new calves, imagine running your sick calves through the barn in the morning and then processing in the afternoon without some sort of disinfectant in between. You know, you just exposed all your new calves to the saliva and the slobber of the, the potentially BVDPIs. We do know that in our sick cattle populations and the cattle that die, we'll have about 10x the prevalence of BVDPIs than we do uh, in our normal population of a half percent. We'll, we'll have 5% of the cattle that are chronically ill or, or die in the hospital. So we know that in that in that uh, population around our hospitals and, and, and hospital pens that we have 10x the prevalence of BVDPIs it, meaning it's it's higher risk of exposure to to, to naive calves, um, and so so understanding that we're gonna so what what does BVD cause? Well, BVD is like any other virus, um, in in causes immunosuppression. Remember, there's two reasons why animals get sick: either a suppressed immune system or an overwhelming dose of a pathogen. And, and so if we have bovine viral diarrhea and these calves uh, persistently infected and, and we co-mingle some calves and the calves that we co-mingle with do not have an immune response or have not been vaccinated for BVD, they will become transiently infected, right? They're going to get the virus. BVD type 2 has been shown to drastically reduce the white blood cell count, drastically reduce the the ability of the immune system to fight off a disease. So when we get into some of these weird pin type of situations where we have this high morbidity and we have these animals that don't respond to treatment, when we start to dig into some of the diagnostics, we're trying to look for the reasons for immunosuppression. And as we see cattle put together, um, whether it's these, we blame it on histophilus or we blame it on, on the bacteria, really trying to control BVD um, both uh, prior to arrival and at arrival is, is really, really a function of biosecurity and using our vaccines that, that we have. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about vaccines and biosecurity and control of BVD. You're watching Doc Talk, and I'm glad you joined us. I'm Dr. Les Anderson. I'm a beef extension specialist at the University of Kentucky. The Alertus on Farm Test has the opportunity to completely change the industry. A producer is enabled and empowered to be able to take the sample and run the test or tests at their leisure without scheduling anybody. And honestly, reproduction is the thing that we measure the least, and it's the thing that dictates profitability the most. The Alertus on Farm Test will help us to identify cows that get pregnant early. It'll improve our efficiency tenfold. As a stocker operator, your job is to turn forage into profit. With the right implant, you can. Revlor G improves grazing performance for 150 days, the same length as the typical grazing period. And it's dosed for stockers' maturity levels, adding up to an extra 23 pounds. See why Revlor G is the number one choice in stocker implants at RevlorG.com. A withdrawal period has not been established in pre-ruminating calves. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. It's the drive, the passion, the unbridled desire to be the world's greatest. It's the early mornings, late nights, and every hour in between spent grooming the next generation of champions. We're with you through the best times and the tough times. Seeing your horses through inevitable health scares and setbacks you never saw coming. Everything they deserve is here, delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring. Shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and uh, I'm with Production Animal Consultation as a veterinarian, and I consult uh, cattle feeding facilities. I'm also a faculty member at Iowa State University, doing a lot of work with veterinarians, with producers, and, and 
of course, my favorite, the students. Um, so the first thing I get asked is how could I remove BVDPIs from the herd? And from a feed yard situation, we can take an ear notch or take a sample from the cattle on arrival, submit that sample and determine which animals are, are persistently infected. And you should work with your veterinarian on if it's your operation, if it fits. For me, generally, um, backgrounders that are gonna keep cattle about 80 days and turn those over, uh, I can make that pay. Just know this, that if you're gonna go to ear notching and for BVD control in a feed yard, if you test one, you have to test them all. There's no way of predicting whether it's yearlings, calves, or whatever. And so that's really the limiting step um, of, of ear notch and, and removal, okay? Now, the biggest way that I, or the best way to control BVD is vaccination. And we vaccinate calves at branding. We vaccinate calves two weeks prior to shipment, and we vaccinate calves on arrival at feed yard. And or if we precondition, we vaccinate them on the day of weaning and we wait two to three weeks and we revaccinate them. My recommendation is that BVD antigen, modified live, is put in those calves at branding two weeks prior to arrival and arrival, or if I wean them on the ranch at weaning and two weeks after. And here's the scenario. We have five-way modified live virals today in our industry, okay? They're all injectable form. There has been a lot of promotion of intranasal modified live vaccines for calves and for, for both at the ranch and at the, the feed yard. You need to know that the intranasal vaccines do not contain the BVD antigen. And when we start to think about calves that typically last year, two years ago, would have got vaccinated with the syringe with a five-way modified live viral and, and had some emerging protection to bovine viral diarrhea or BVD, um, if they don't get any other vaccinations prior to coming to the feed yard, they will have not seen any BVD antigen until they go through that processing barn. And we know that it takes five to seven days for a vaccine. If those calves are going to not be, if they're going to show an immune response, it's going to take five to seven days before we see that BVD response. So for five to seven days in that feedlot, those calves are basically not immunologically uh, stimulated to protect the calf against BVD. We need to make sure, and I think most veterinarians are recommending, that if you're going to use an internasal at branding, make sure you use the injectable BVD products, type 1 and type 2, to help protect those calves, not only while they're on your ranch, but then when they get to the feed yard. Because I have looked at some calves this year that we've had a lack of response to BVD vaccine. And if you're trying to protect these calves against BVD persistently infected calves and exposure, the most important vaccine is the first one. Because when I come back at two, three, four weeks after arrival, those calves have generally already been exposed to the BVD PI. So, so what I'm really, the whole focus of the show is that if you're gonna use internasals, make sure you use an injectable uh, BVD. Uh, internasals are good products, they're great products, nothing against them. This is simply about making sure you have BVD antigen in your vaccine arsenal. Uh, and I probably could have started with the show and just repeated that, uh, but anyway, um, it's something that's on our minds, something we're seeing in the field, and something I want you all to, to be aware of. I want to say thank you so much for watching this show. Another big shout out to Animal Medical Center in Great Bend, Kansas. Uh, great staff, great group of veterinarians. Um, been very, very influential in my career and helped me a lot. Um, also, if you want to know more about DocTalk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Uh, always work with your local veterinarian and learn more about your vaccines and, and vaccine protocols. Uh, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for watching today, and I'll see you down the road. Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals.